Hi, I'm Jen from Beaker Button and I'm going to show you how to make a crosswheel dorset button. This is the easiest button to make, so it should be a nice one to teach. You need a closed ring, a length of thread, and I'm using a size 18 tapestry needle. The ring that I'm going to use is 18 millimetres across and I'm using about 1.8 metres of thread. So if you're judging how much thread you need, it's generally a hundred times the width of the button. You'll thread your needle and then move the needle so it's nearly halfway down the thread. So you have a longer and a shorter end. It just means you've got less thread to pull through at once then. Makes it a little bit easier. And you're going to tie your longer end around the ring in a single knot, leaving about an inch for the tail. So about the length of your thumbnail. Okay, so I'm gonna give you the right-handed instructions. If you're left-handed, you might feel more comfortable stitching the opposite way to the way I stitch. See how you go. So the first thing we're gonna do is blanket stitch all the way around the ring and we're gonna cover this tail as we're going. So to do that, I'm gonna bring the needle from the back to the front and stop. I'm going to pick up this thread here. So I'm going underneath this thread from right to left and I'm going to pull the thread through. And as you pull, you'll see you get a little loop that forms here. You want that loop to go over the tail. This is your stitch and pull tight. I'm gonna do that again. Back to front, straight underneath there and pull through. This is called casting and you're catching that tail down as you're going back and under. And it's, you can see I'm pulling quite tightly. Make a nice ridge around the outside like this. So I'm using a four ply sock yarn because it's a little bit strong, nice colours, washes really well and you can pull it nice and tight. And when I'm doing classes and things I tend to teach on sock wool. When you start to catch the other end of the thread just pull your needle down a little bit and, uh, and you can see you get this nice ridge forming around the outside. I'm just trying to keep my hands in the right position so the camera can catch what I'm doing. I have this peculiar arrangement where it's tied up around my neck with shoelaces. It's all mod cons here. So as you're stitching round, once you've gone over the tail, you'll find it's much quicker and easier. Through, under and pull. And just tell you a little bit, you can use all sorts of different threads and things. Um, I'm saying I like sock wool, but I also use things like cotton perle. And if I've got a big chunky button that I want to make, I use a nice big chunky thread. If I'm using little tiny thin rings, I tend to use small, thin, delicate thread. But something that you can pull tight. Because as you can see, you need to pull it quite firmly. Every now and then you'll need to also hold the ring, sorry, hold the needle and let the ring go. And that takes out any extra spin. And you'll need to do that fairly frequently because otherwise you get into a bit of a tangle. And one of the reasons I like sock wool is because it doesn't tangle as much, doesn't tick, uh, stick together as much as cotton. And back in the old days when they were making them, they made them in white linen. They make nice crisp buttons, but they stick. They really stick. So you can see I'm moving all the way around now. I'm not pushing my threads around, or not pushing my stitches around, but I am making sure that the metal is all covered. Just coming around the corner here. So you can see it doesn't take very long to do. Obviously your first button will take you a little bit longer and this is quite a small button to be making because it's quicker to video. But even something of 2.5-3 centimetres doesn't take that long. So nicely covered. 
I'm going to move my needle down my thread again to give myself a bit more space. You've got a nice ridge around the outside. Okay, so then I'm going to do slicking, which is where you're going to roll the ridge all the way from the outside to the inside. So you make a nice smooth ridge like this. And then you're going to wrap your spokes around to form a wheel. So this is the bit that tends to be the most complicated. I'll take this nice and slow. The first thing you're going to do is hold your ring on the outside so you can see the whole circle. You're going to pull your thread down from the back underneath at six o'clock and then back up to 12. So that's right across the middle of the button. Then you're going to turn your ring slightly and come round to the left underneath with the back thread and over the centre of the button. Turn the ring slightly again, round to the left of the last one over the centre of the button. So you'll notice your back spokes are lying off to one side, your front spokes are all nice and central. So I'm going to do five wraps which will give me ten spokes. The last one I'm going to pinch over the top between my thumb and forefinger. I'm going to grab my needle and I'm going to catch all the threads in from the back and there's a little point on the back of the button here where you can pull them all in if you get the wrong bit you'll see there's a thread off to one side you see i've got that little thread there so you're just trying to find that little point where the threads all cross at the back you're going to pull the needle through that point go down the opposite side and pull into the centre and that makes all your spokes nice and central. So you've got one going across this way, you're going to come up 90 degrees from where you went down and across. So you've got a crossed stitch in the centre and that pulls everything nice and tight. Okay, And that's laying. It takes a little bit of practice, once you've got the hang of it it's reasonably easy to do. So the next stage is to do the rounding and this is where I, I teach cross wheels first because it's the simplest rounding pattern. So you're going to bring your needle up through these big triangles you've just made. The front and the back of the spoke counts as one and you're going down to the right or clockwise over that spoke. You'll notice I'm keeping it tight between my fingers here. So we've got one stitch over the spoke up to the left of the next spoke on the left so it's a back stitch you're working back two spokes the one you've worked over and the next one and then you're going down over that spoke to the right or clockwise so anti-clockwise under two including the one you've gone over clockwise over one and you do that all the way around so up to the one on the left down over to the right, to the left of the one on the left, down over to the right and you keep doing that until you filled it in. So I'll show you what one round looks like. It's again fairly quick to do and I'm holding it tight between my fingers at the back just like so. So that's one round, that's a stitch over each spoke. Get my hands to work properly. You can see you've got a stitch over each spoke then and you just keep going. So I'm going to come up to the left of the next one on the left and work round again. Cross wheels, you can do as many rounds as you want to. So you don't have to fill them out to the edge if you don't want to. You just keep working until you think, yep, yeah, that's what I want, that looks pretty. So I'm just gonna do a couple of rounds for this one. The one that I showed you at the beginning, that had four rounds and that was more or less filled in. And I'll just do a couple of rounds, so I'm making sure I've got two stitches on each spoke and you'll be able to count them. Okay, so this is the last one. I'm gonna let some of the twist out again so it doesn't tangle up and you can see you've got one two here all the way around so 
If I turn this over onto the back, finishing off, you're going to slide the needle through the back, slide back to the middle again, like so. and then leave the tail for sewing it on. And what you'll get is a dorset button. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Any questions, www.beakerbutton.co.uk. Thank you.